All right, well, hello everybody. So it's early April 2020. We all know what's going on. Certainly I've had some extra time since I'm working from home uh, to be fishing. And certainly a good idea if times are gonna get tough and they very well could to be able to supply a lot of your own food. So I'm lucky enough to live on a, a canal that's connected to uh, Charlotte Harbor. So I can fish pretty much any time I want. So right now I've got, that one's got a bobber on it with a little minnow. If you can see the bobber. It's got a little minnow uh, on it. There we go. Got a little minnow on it that I caught out here. And uh, this is like a mosquito fish gambusia. And then uh, the na main thing I fish with is just a free-lined uh, shrimp. I buy them fresh and then I just freeze them immediately so they're fresh. I just free-line it and let it float around and just slowly work it work my way back. So I'm going to show you the last week's results of uh, how I've been doing here. And I do also have like a, a crankbait there that I throw out sometimes. I actually had a nice fish on last night but it uh, broke off. I don't know what if the line was frayed or what but that was very disappointing. So that's the main things I use out here. So let's take a look at the last week and uh, see how I did. All right, we've got a catfish on here. I think it's a catfish. I could be mistaken though. It's fighting like a catfish. A decent sized one though, maybe. Yeah, it's a catfish. But we're going to keep everything. This is pandemic fishing. At least if it's big enough, I'm keeping it. Hardhead cats, they got to be on the larger size for me to keep because there's just not enough meat on them otherwise. And it looks like a decent size. I'll probably keep him. Yeah, he's big enough. So there's one for the cooler. I got another catfish, I think. We'll see. Oh, no, that's not a catfish. That is not a catfish. What is it? Is that a redfish? That might be a small redfish. Yeah, that is a small redfish. Haven't caught one of these out here for a while, but they are out here. Yes, that's about probably 13, 14 inches, so he's not legal. Oh, oh! Watch out there, buddy. So if you want to uh, get more use out of your saltwater canal, your canal, uh, key for fishing anyway, and attract crabs and anything else that's, that you could use for food. Key is, I think, to uh, have some structure uh, close to your seawall where it's not so far out where it gets in the way of fishing, but it's close enough where you can uh, use it to attract bait fish, which attract bigger fish. And that's definitely been the case with me. So let's take a look at what we got here. All right, now I've put stuff over the years, uh, rocks, brick structure, tree limbs um, along the edge here. Here's one right here, as you can see. That's held up pretty well. Things do sink though, and this muck, there's a lot of muck in this uh, canal, and things do sink, because I used to have a lot more rock over here than what you can see now. There's a little bit left, um, but I had a lot more. But I've had some uh, big tree limbs that have fallen in that have done well. See, there's a bunch of rocks there, and the tide is out. That's why I'm showing you this now, because with the tide out, you can see things a lot better. So you see a big rock piles there, so that's normally underwater. And then we got these uh, tree limbs uh, right here. You can see they're covered with barnacles, and you know there's snails and stuff all around it. And all of this is structure. And uh, definitely is a fish attracting because I've definitely noticed an increase in the bait fish and the types of fish that I catch uh, fishing off the seawall. 
So as you can see, this is pretty easy to do. You just got to get stuff that you can throw in, rocks, uh, bricks, um, concrete blocks if you have any extra that you don't need. And it does a really good job of creating some good structure for your fish. And again, some heavy tree limbs will work really well as well. So you can see that's been there a while, you can tell. Catfish, I think. It's back in the evening again. I think. Yep. Yeah, that one's a little small. Yeah. Yeah, it's too small to keep. So he'll go back in. Alright, we got another snapper on. Let's see if he's big enough to keep. Looks like about the size of that other one I caught yesterday. Move, Monty. Got another one right before dark. I don't know what this is, so I think it's a catfish. Yep. Can hear him grunting. Monty. Monty, out. Well, didn't have my camera with me this morning. Um, I caught the biggest catfish yet that I've caught, so I'm going to clean him up right now because I'm almost out of ice. And i uh, got a dinner tonight of mangrove snapper. So one of the nice things about being on a canal like this that leads out into eventually the Gulf of Mexico or any large body of water is you don't really have to worry about it getting too fished out. And unless everybody was out here fishing, it might be an issue, but um, I mean... It, it's not going to get fished out. There's just miles and miles of, of canals, okay, everywhere. So there's plenty of, of water and time uh, for fish to move up and down. I've got pretty much everything out here you can think of except for uh, uh, sea trout. That's about the only common bay species that I haven't caught out here. You know, I've caught jacks. I've even caught a couple sharks, small sharks, um, you know, reds, mangrove snapper, Mayan cichlids. Um, Mohara, of course catfish, definitely see those, both uh, sail cats and regular hardheads. So a wide variety of fish uh, have been caught out here. Oh, can't forget uh, snook and redfish, which there's definitely some uh, splashing around those docks over there. So the redfish will take the uh, free line shrimp. Snook don't seem to ever take the free line shrimp, uh, so you got to really cast for the snook. All right, got something on. Uh, free line shrimp, probably a catfish. No, I don't think so, no. It is not a catfish. It's a snapper and a nice one. All right. Yeah, he's eating size. Monty's waiting over here, but watch out, Monty. I don't want to lose this. It's a nice one. Yeah, that's a nice one. Wow. Look at that. Not as big as that other one the other day, but it's almost as big. There we go. Very nice. Alright, got one on a free line shrimp over here. That is a crab. Big old crab. Oops, let go. Yeah, nice blue crab there. Now he got his shrimp. Yeah, I would have kept him. That was a nice sized crab. Oh well. Alright, looks like we got a bite or a crab. Still got it. Yeah, there we go. Got it. Looks like we got another Mohara. Yep, Mohara. 
Those are good eating. One I had the other day, that tasted great. There we go. About the size as the other one. Maybe a little smaller. Hey, probably a little smaller. Still very good size. All right. Yeah, nice fish. Very nice. All right, well, hopefully you found uh, that interesting. Gave you something to do, I guess. If you don't have much to do, I mean, a lot of us are working still. Um, working from home or doing what you always do. Sometimes it works harder. But, uh, you know, having a, if you have a place where you can fish, uh, it's close by and get some extra food. Never a bad thing, and it's fun. So I will be doing a video soon about uh, just what I'm doing with my garden and uh, food production here in the in the yard so I will have that up uh, pretty soon but I uh, wish everybody good luck and uh, hopefully uh, things will go well all right we'll see you later